as a PS to this video, I'm going to say that this stone was not as easy to set on a D-shaped piece as it was on a flat piece. So, I mean, it isn't in there nicely now. Um, I, in fact, I'm extremely pleased with it. I'll try and get it from the side so you can see it. It's set in really nicely. Um, that's a bit better. It's set in really nicely now, but it wasn't easy. I had quite a bit of help from Facebook groups that I'm a member of, um, and I did persevere. Um, so I am going to show you how I set that stone when I come to do the pendant. So if you want to see that, it'll be in my next video um, where I do the matching pendant. Okay, thank you. Okay, what we've got here is um, the stone, a drill, a ball burr and a setting burr. Now, if we switch these on, the measurers, the calipers, and we go like that. We will see. Oh, actually, that said four when I just measured it. It's vert. Um, let me turn it round for you. That's virtually four millimeter. In fact, when I measured it two seconds ago, it said four millimeters on there. But hey ho, we're going to go with it as a four millimeter stone um, and hope that we're going to be okay with that. So, ah, that's why it needs to clear there. Sorry, so let's give that a try again. Oops. Yeah, 3.97. We'll go with that. That's near enough to four. And in fact, it probably is a four. Yeah. So uh, we now, let's close those up. Yeah, that's it, need zero. Uh, then we're going to put, obviously, drill through. So we've got a 1.3 drill. The ball burr is 3.37 and the setting burr is, let's start off again, make sure it's cleared, and that is 3.95. So what, what I'm going to do now is take you over to the drill and um, we've, got, we've got our piece. There we are, there's our piece. It's marked, it's cut to two centimetres and it's marked in the centre and I've um, marked it with a centre punch so that there's a, a slight indentation for the drill to go in. So we'll go over to the drill and we'll do that now. I've got this all set up now. I've got the drill bit in. Uh, we're going to drill right the way through so we've got a hole on the other side and it is quite thick. So um, uh, let's get on to this. Apologies if my hands get in the way uh, but I do have to be careful with this. Uh, I've got it in my drill press uh, so it shouldn't take too long. So let's go for it. silver there <laughs> right so that's um that's drilled right the way through but there's there's the back you can see it's drilled right the way through so what we're going to do now is 
change over to the bauble. on that before we start so we've got a nice hole um, to take our bulber through so um, yeah let's get on and do this so this is going to take a lot of the silver out now ready for the setting burr Gonna go right the way through with this one. Just make a nice seat. It's getting hot, so I'm going to stop that. Put a little bit more lubrication on there because uh, everything's getting hot. Because I'm holding it with my hand, I can actually feel it. that I don't know what's wrong with me today I had my second covid jab yesterday if we seem to be blaming everything on covid I'll <laughs> blame it on that why not right we're going to take a little bit more out of there see this that is I don't know if you can see. yeah we've got a little bit of a a seat coming in there um, what we do this for uh, we use these ball burrs because they're a little more a little bit more aggressive than the setting burr and uh, the setting burrs we don't want to we don't want to wear away we we like to save those and be careful with those um, but if I Put that in there now. No, I think we need to take a bit more off to be fair. So let's uh, put some more of this on. Let's see if I can put it down without dropping it this time. Right, so we'll line this up. Take a little bit more out. Because this is is this burr is smaller than the setting burr anyway. So uh, take a little bit more. Out. Okay, I'm not going to take any more out of there. I'll see if I can show you. It doesn't it doesn't come through to the back. Um, we've still got just the nice drill hole there. Um, if you can see this, I'm not sure if you can, but if you can see that, yeah, see a little bit of a seat in there where the ball burr is taking it, taking the silver out. So we're going to take take this one out now. So this is the one where really we need to. Keep trying the stone now 
to see if it's sitting deep enough and hopefully not too deep. That. that's not actually lined up so I'm gonna make another mark on the silver right what I need to get for this is a drill vise and um, it did come with I, I did have one that came with another one but it was too big for this little one I need to get a little one This is where we have to try it now. Save my little bits of silver. Right, I'm going to take you over to where the stone is now and we'll try it. Okay, we're back at the stone. So um, I've got it laying upside down on here. I'm going to push this in on top of it. And what we want, what we're looking for is for the table of the stone to be sitting level with the, um, level with the top of the silver. No, I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> I can't believe that. It's never happened before. That actually is is level. Let me see if I can show you. There's nothing wrong with that. That is completely level with the top of there. So um, none of the backwards and forwards it is, and it's looking quite good. Let's see if I can do it without losing focus. That look pretty. Hi, so time for setting. So what we're looking for is um, because this has got quite a quite a big dome on it. I I actually should have learned, uh, <laughs> and um, if I'd have put a three millimeter stone in it, the it wouldn't have come as as far down the sides if you get my meaning because it's bigger it's coming lower down and i need the girdle of the stone to go to be held in by that um silver there um but actually that's that's looking beautiful i i am very pleased with that it never happens that uh you get it in first time. Good job I didn't do any more or else we'd have been too far down. But now we need to go and um, and set the stone. So um, we'll, we'll go off and, and do that next. Of course, we're not ready to set the stone. That was me getting very excited um, because it had worked so well. Um, but of course, we've got to do all the other soldering first. So um, we'll put the stone setting stuff on one side. Uh, and um, yeah, I was getting really carried away so ignore everything I said about setting the stone because we're going to do soldering. Uh, what I thought I'd try and do with this pendant is basically to, to sort of mimic the ring in so much as I'm going to use the, a ring and so the, the, sa the two components are the same. That's what I'm trying to say. So what I would like to do to try and get the theme going is to find out the halfway point on that uh, and solder it onto the ring. Obviously, I've got to... The difficulty with that is going to be getting it to sit level while I solder it. So... Um, that that did balance so what, what i need to do now is go to the soldering station and get the flux going get the solder on get that get that soldered on then we need to put some kind of bale on the top 
and then we can get to the exciting bit of uh, setting the stone. So um, let's get on with that, shouldn't take too long. Okay, um, what I've just shown you is pictures of me sweat soldering onto the ring and onto the um, ingots, for want of a better word, where we're going to set the stone. Uh, so I've put solder on those, made it not flow but i've melted it then i've put it into the pickle and cleaned it and now on this contraption this is a little ceramic um block really uh, and it comes with lots of these pegs i've lost a lot of them but uh, it came with more pegs but it's very good for propping things up uh, in all directions so i've put some underneath the ring to keep it level um i don't know which way you can see yeah oh that's better so i i've propped it up in all directions um and the solder is on there solder's melted i've just got to flow it and um put them put them both together uh, i'm just gonna move that slightly up i'm gonna regret this there we go I'm just going to move that. So now I'm going to solder those. Um, so let's see how we go. <clears throat> There's no solder to jump around because it's all been melted onto the pieces. So that's that helps a lot when you're doing this kind of work because obviously I've um, I've got to get it in the right place onto the ingot, and I've also got to prop up the ring this side so that it, it doesn't it doesn't flop over really um so let's let's see how we go need to uh heat the larger piece first obviously um seems to seem to spend most of my life saying that but you all know that you heat up the largest piece first uh, and then and then go on to the now I'll go on to the ring, which will be, have been getting some residual heat anyway from when I was heating up the ingot. I'm going to call it an ingot, just for want of a better word, really. So before I put these two together, I fluxed it again to make the flux flow. Uh, so we'll see how we go. I don't know whether you'll see, see the the solder flow but I certainly will I'm yet again standing on tiptoe don't know why I don't get myself a little step here <laughs> it's quite a lot of silver to heat up actually And then when we've done this, uh, we've got to heat it all up again because we've got to solder on a bale. Which we haven't decided yet what form the bale is going to take. Ah, here we go. I can see it. sure you'll see that but uh, I've just seen it seen it go where's my where's my solder pick oh there it is wow while, while I can see that going let me just press it down a little bit just to make sure while I hold the heat on it take the heat off there we go those should be well and truly fastened together now fingers crossed anyway so we can take hopefully take all these little props out pick this up see that's what happens i drop them down there and then they get lost in my pumice there we go that's all soldered onto there so we're gonna quench it and pickle it and see how we go from there love that sound right we just got to wait now and see what comes out of what the what i've got set up here is the um the pendant itself um there's 
um, probably two thirds of a jump ring at the top there uh, that I've cut off with flush cutters and um, I've held it, held that, held the jump ring with a pair of um, pliers and just rubbed it on sandpaper just to smooth the edges, sanded across the top of this big circle. Um, I have now <laughs> got it set up. Uh, I've put easy solder either side of there, flocks and easy solder, because the last thing I want is for this to get too hot, that um, solder here to melt and for this this big piece to tip over so I've got to be very very gentle I don't want to heat this I've got to heat it enough but I don't want to heat it too much so that I can just get this solder the easy solder to flow and um, solder that jump ring on so let's go in and have a go uh, and see what we can do fingers crossed holding breath time I think uh, we'll see what we can do. I'll get my solder pick because I might just have to touch touch something just to get it into position. There's the flux bubbling up over there. got to get this warm enough. The torch seems to be spluttering a little bit as well but I don't know why. Maybe it needs filling. See how we go. The last thing I need is to start again from the beginning so let's see if we can do it. It might work in my favour if it's not too fierce. I'm going to have to change torches. Keep going with this, don't want to lose the heat I've already got. I'll turn this one off. And then swap torches to this one. That's a good start, it's just been filled up not so long ago, so it might do the job. But like I say, the last thing I want to do is that solder join. But that's hard solder, so if I'm careful, I should be able to get this on. without messing up that down there. It's going to have to come around the other side so that I can see if it, if it flows. It seems to have flowed one side and not the other. Let's get this. Ooh, come on. Oh, there we go. That's done it. I saw it go. Woo! Oh, 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 oh. Right. As I say, holding breath time. Let's have a look. Please don't fall off. No, it's on there. Oh, you can see it soldered on the back. If I can show you a bit closer, you can see wasn't intending to solder it to the back I wanted to solder it to the top but at this moment in time actually I'm not <laughs> oh no I won't say I'm grateful for anything because that's not the case but um it's such a fine little jump ring it really doesn't matter and it it looks very neat so I think we'll go with what we've got there so pick up quench and pick up and then I will give it a polish and then we'll set that stone that I was very, <laughs> very keen to set about four stages ago. Uh, but anyway, I'll uh, get all the uh, labouring work done and I'll come back to you. Right, good morning. Uh, back again. We're now ready, finally, um, to set the stone in this little pendant. Um, here's the ring. As I said, um, I did actually send you to my pebble. Um, to have a look at the um, flush setting. So we've got one in there, that's got the seat already cut. So we're just gonna set the stone in that. Um, yeah, um, it's not like setting a flush setting a stone in a flat surface. 
um, I did get some help from Facebook groups um, because what, what happens is um, because I've chosen a big stone, I should have chosen a small stone, but any, anyway, it's been a good learning curve. Uh, I've learned a lot, but obviously the silver is ha a higher here than it is here at the side. Now, normally you've got a you've got it in a in a flat surface, and you just um, push the silver in, secure it in a level surface. Listen to level surface, um, but brute force and ignorance, <laughs> we managed to get it set. And I'm really pleased with how it looks. It's beautiful, and it's really smooth. And um, so I thought we'd have a go today with the pendant. So I'm going to pop you down there. Uh, pop you there so you can see that better? that's not too bad is it okay <clears throat> so i've got my bits and bobs well more importantly i've got my glasses so let's put those on um Right, I've got a rubber block to, to do the, my pressing on uh, because obviously this has got a, it's raised up at the back. So I can't put it on a flat surface because I'm going to press it down. So I'm going to press it hopefully like that on the edge so that the, um, the circle is off the edge of the block and it's level. Now, uh, what I've got here for the earrings is the three centimetre now, as you can see, they should be an awful lot easier to set than that great big one. It always amazes me at how much difference there is in a three centimetre and four centimetre stone. I don't know if you can see those there. Let's put it by the white background. The three, let's put it down there and see if you can see. The three and four millimetre stones, there's ever such a big difference in them. You probably can't see it properly there, um, but I assure you there is a big difference. But anyway, today we're on the four centimetre. There it is. There's the pendant. What else I've got here is my burnisher. That's my burnishing tool, which is very posh now. I've put it into a handle uh, because um, it was loose. It didn't have a handle on it before and um, I lost it and it had, fall it had rolled off the table and fallen into the waste paper bin. And it took me ages to find it because I was too lazy to make a new one. Um, but so I've put it in a handle. Uh, this burnisher is a nail. Um, I learned how to um, flush set at a, um, a workshop with a, a lovely lady called Hayley Kruger. Um, she did a flush setting workshop. She also does one-to-one -one workshops. She'll teach you virtually anything you need to know. She's, she's very talented. Um, I'll, in fact, I'll put her link below if you like, um, just in case anybody in the UK um, is is close enough. She, she's in the Cotswolds. Um, uh, well, she's in Sirencester, actually. That's where her studio is. But anyway, uh, when we turned up at this um, workshop, one of the things that was on our bench waiting for us was a nail, uh, which you tended to think it'd probably been left there by mistake. But no, how we started off was making our own burnisher. So we had to saw the, the head off the nail uh, and then we had to file and polish our burnisher. Uh, so that's how it started, uh, which was a really good learning tool. One of the other important things she she taught me was to always have a darning needle on your bench. And it's probably one of the most useful tips anybody's ever given to me. Because what you do is when you set your stone, the way you test it is by pushing your darning needle through and sit like I, I did it on this one uh, and uh, you can you can give that a good old poke and that's not going anywhere so um it's a bit scary it's really scary uh, I think this one popped out about three or four times but popped out several times anyway um uh with the darning needle and at that in that circumstance you're actually cursing the darning needle but anyway it's very useful for that so what we're going to do is make a start so let me just get everything together and uh, we'll we'll start 
So first of all, we're going to pop our stone in there so that it's level. A useful way of doing it is putting your stone upside down and pressing, pressing your piece on the top of it. It's not liking this rubber block. Ah, oh, there we go. And I was going to say, if you're really lucky enough, you'll hear it click and it will stay in. Uh, and the click is is a lovely thing to hear. So that's that's just clicked into place. Um, so I'm not sure if you let's see if I can get a little bit closer to you. Oh, now it's dropped out. Where's that gone? Okay, that was with looking at the camera. Okay, hang on, I'll find my Sorry stone. about that. Um, stone popped away. Let's see if I can get a bit close to you. So we've got the stone in there. Uh, as I was saying, uh, if you're lucky enough to hear it click, that's what you're looking for. You are looking for a slightly smaller hole than um, than the stone. So let's see. If, let's get onto the edge of here again. Um, okay. Hmm. Not sure where it's easiest for you. Well, let, anyway, let let let's go and see how you get on seeing me. Hopefully, it'll be okay. Uh, actually, I've not used this with the handle in it before. I put this handle in because I I'd lost it. So what I'm going to do, uh, as you've seen me do before, uh, your burnisher to start with, you need it at about a forty five degree angle. And what you're looking to do is press that silver over that over the girdle of that stone. Now, I'm starting at the top and the bottom, like nine o'clock and six o'clock. The reason being, I wouldn't normally, normally do that probably, but the reason being is because that's where I've got most of my silver uh, and that's what I need to work on most. So, Put plenty, plenty of pressure on that. And of course, with it being curved like that, the burnisher is, is slipping off it. So it, 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 it did, I'm not going to lie, it did take quite a lot of work to get that in there. But it was so, so worth it. So what we're going to do now is see if we can hold this and uh, do the same from the top but that's a bit easier for me because it's closer to me so burnish 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 what we're doing is uh, the aim of the game is to push that silver over the widest part of the stone and uh, that will hold it in back to the bottom. I'm going to try doing that facing me because that was a lot easier. Get on the back of here. It was far easier doing the top bit, I don't know why. So that, that actually what I'm doing now is what you're aiming for. We're easing that silver over that girdle. And that is, that hopefully is showing you perfectly. Um, let me see if I can get a bit closer to you. Um, I can actually see the silver going over there. And that is what we're looking for. We're looking to push it over at a 45 degree angle or thereabouts and when we've done that all around we will then put the burnisher vertically and we will we will go around that way but that is looking beautiful now there's a long long way to go here because there's so much silver um to press down So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work off. It will take a while to do this. Um, there's no doubt about that. But when I've when I've done those two, that the top is looking a lot better. It's because I can't get in at the bottom because there's not so much silver. 
to press down on. Um, and then we will go in at the sides and we will do exactly the same at the side. Now, in this on this occasion, as you can see, it's a lot, lot easier at the side where there's not so much silver. But it is, I can see, at the top and the side, um, I need to get it closer. To do, the, to do the bottom, I need to be more over the top of it and get it closer to me. But um, I'll do that. I'll, what I'll do is I'll go... So this is what I'm going to do. So basically, the top and the bottom, like that, as I've shown you, that that is that is perfect that's exactly how i want it there uh, and i can see a lovely shiny edge of silver just working its way over that stone i'm going to do the same at the bottom and then when i've done the top and the bottom not completely i will then go and do some at the side like this and i will go top bottom left right uh, and I will work away in an orderly manner, do those, get those four corners going. And then I will start working my way around. In fact, I'll show you how, show you this now. I will then start working my way around here like this. I'll try and zoom in um, on this to show you what I'm doing. But um, that, that's a perfect example of what I want. Um, and then I can't do it now. But actually, when I've done all my 45 degree angle, I will come back to you to save you sitting watching me working on this. Because uh, as I say, I'm not going to pretend that this doesn't take a little bit of work to set it um, be because of the odd shape of it. But it is well worth it and it, it is possible. It just needs that extra little bit of time and effort putting in. But I don't know. Let's see if you can see that. So we're beginning to make make a difference on that. So what I'm going to do is just work on that. And when I've done all my 45 degrees angle all the way around, I'll come back to you. And then we'll, we'll do the nice um, bit at the end where we have. We're going around in a full circle and we're going upright. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay, here we go. Um, I've done my working round at my 45 degrees. Um, because of the angle, I have slipped a few times and I have made scratches around here, but I'm not worried about that. I can get those scratches out, no problem at all. What I'm worried about more than anything is getting my stone set so um what i've done i don't can you see me there yeah so i've um i've done all my 45 degree work in there uh, and I've, I've gone round and round quite a lot of times that stone is in there uh it's not set fully uh but it even it even stands Haley's darning needle test. Um, so what we're going to do now is um, get our um, engraver, what do they call it, burnishing tool. Get our burnishing tool and um, we're going to we're going to go around like this and work it and work it and work it and until we've got a nice edge. Fortunately, uh, well, you're not supposed to be touching the stone anyway, which which I don't think I am. Well, I hope I'm not. Um, but this is a black spinel, and they are really, really hard. So they will take a little bit of um, not abusing exactly, uh, but they then they won't break as easy as some of the others. That's what I'm trying to say. So there we go. Um, that I'm happy is not moving it's not moving at all it's quite happy sitting in there it doesn't fall out you do the darning needle test yeah that's more than happy in there so 
basically all it is um it is more difficult to sum up it is more difficult than doing it in a flat surface but it's not impossible just um work the pieces uh, that you need to more than others the top and the bottom where where it's it's deeper and there's more silver push that over uh, and and work that in uh, and then once once you've polished it and sanded it and polished it you will end up with this lovely they're they're looking probably quite different at the minute one's nice and shiny and one's very scratched uh, but there we go that's the stone set and that's how i did it no one's saying it's as easy as in a flat surface no one's saying that and it is a bit fiddly but it's not impossible and it's very enjoyable to do so i hope you enjoyed that um i'll go off and um just sand and polish that and get out my little scratches um but on the whole i'm very pleased got a nice little pendant and an earring so there we go more than happy <laughs>